the pictures from Sri Lanka, the former Ceylon in South Asia, are stunning. And they teach a lesson, too, we ought to learn. And that lesson is this. There's something crucial that happens when countries become split between a tiny elite at the top, as we had in Sri Lanka, and the mass of people at the bottom who are constantly being ripped off to increase the wealth concentrated at the top. Here's what inevitably happens. The people at the top realize there's even more wealth they can get by borrowing. They borrow around the world from other governments, from private banks. And what do they pledge as collateral? Their own people. The people will be taxed to raise the money to pay off the debts that we borrowed and that most of which came to enhance the beauty of our palaces and the power of our government to repress the people who eventually have to pay. And that's what happened in Sri Lanka. The debts were unpayable. And finally, when they cost more as interest rates went up, well, the Sri Lankan people didn't have the money, couldn't pay. And so suddenly food and fuel couldn't be delivered to the country. It's an island country and they can't survive. And they understood who had ripped them off. It wasn't the foreign companies, it was their own leadership. And so we saw those pictures over the last few weeks of the people in the streets, of the inability or unwillingness of the police anymore to keep in power a government as corrupt and rotten as that one was. But that's only the extreme version. It's really not that different when people like Trump and Johnson borrow vast amounts of money for whatever projects they have, and then the rest of us have to pay the bill. And then the question is only, when will we face the kinds of difficulties that the people of Sri Lanka exploded out of? And now the people are swimming in the president's private swimming pool and burnt his house down and are struggling to reconstitute a society without a capitalist elite at the top.